Eternal gracious Lord, we come to you, God, on this Resurrection Sunday, God. First of all, I say thank you, Lord. We thank you, God, for your spirit, God. We thank you, God, for your resurrection power, God. We thank you, God, God, that you saw fit to wake us up this morning, God, to start us on the right path, God, with the activities of our lives. God, we thank you, God, that we're here today worshiping you in spirit and in truth. Now, God, I pray right now that you may give me articulation of speech and clarity of mind to preach the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. To the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, let us leave our hearts to amen. 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 Coming out of the Gospel of Matthew, the 28th chapter, looking at verse 1, I'll be reading from the New King James Version on this resurrection Sunday. Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came, and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning, and his clothing as white as snow. And the guard shook the fear of him, and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, and as has said, Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and indeed he is going before you into Galilee. Then you will see him. Behold, I have told you, so they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy, and ran to bring the disciples' word. May the Lord bless us to the reader. For just a few moments with your thoughts and prayers, I'm going to put a tag on this text and preach on the topic, Anointed with Power. Anointed with Power. Can you find a neighbor? Say, neighbor. Neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. On this resurrection day, you are anointed with power. Find another neighbor, say neighbor, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. oh neighbor, on this particular day, this particular day. you have power, you have power. Amen. amen, amen, anointed with power. Can we be honest for a second, my friends, and say, it's difficult going through life, feeling as though you have no power. Oftentimes, the more we pray, the more we try to do things, it seems as though we do not have any power but rather we are walking in a state of powerless. I don't know about you, but it seems as though when life has dealt you a bad hand, when you're dealing with people on your job, dealing with people in school, dealing with people in your neighborhood, and yes, even dealing with some family members, when you need power, sometimes you feel that all power has gone away. In the real sense, we come to church Sunday after Sunday, we hear the word, we clap our hands, and we fellowship, but oftentimes we leave here, we go home, and sometimes we leave and there's really no power. Does anyone understand what I'm talking about? That oftentimes you're, you're committed to God, you know what God has told you to do, but when people get on your nerves and try to get under your skin, all of a sudden it seems as though that the power you had has gone and disappeared. I don't know about you, but it seems like when we come to church Sunday after Sunday, it's like an automobile. We come and we fill up the tank, we put in the premium, and we put in the good stuff, we're feeling good, we're looking good, and all of a sudden throughout the week we've allowed a whole lot of people and a whole lot of situations get under our skin, and rather than operating on full, we're now going halfway, and then if we're really not careful, we're operating on fumes, just barely making it. I wish I had somebody here that could be honest and say, yes, I've been barely making it. Yes, I heard the word on a Sunday morning, but it seems as though that people have tried to steal my joy. I try to say hi to them, but they can't even say hi back. I try my best to go out of their way and be kind to them, but rather than return kindness, they return complaining, fussing, and grumbling. I don't know who I'm talking to, yes. but every now and again when you're trying to exude God's power in your life, over your life, it seems as though that the enemy comes and tries to rob you of your joy. Yes, you're trying to do the right thing. You're trying to live right. You're trying to pray right. You're trying to do 
are all that God has called you to do, but it seems as though that you are powerless, and any time you seem that you are powerless, you're saying, God, where are you, God? I don't know where you are, God. You told me you would never leave me nor forsake me, God, but God, I don't feel any power right now. The preacher told me I'm anointed with power, but I don't feel any power. You told me, God, that you are always right there for me, God, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, but God, I'm here. I'm hitting a stumbling block right now. I'm getting frustrated, aggravating. God, I really don't understand the situation because it seems as though I'm trying to walk in power, but I really don't feel any power. Do I have a witness here today that can truly say, yes, God, I know I got the anointing all my life, but for some reason, God, I'm not feeling it because I got situations that's trying to bring me down. You're not feeling me like I need you to. This past week, I was watching a documentary on the cable network, and it was talking about the Little Rock Nine. Let me go back and paint the picture. It was the Little Rock Nine in Arkansas, nine students who were selected to integrate Little Rock Central High School. Isn't it amazing how we had segregation during that time, and this time during the Board of Brown versus Board of Education that eliminated segregation. Now, black students can be educated with white students. The governor, the racist governor of Arkansas did not want to have black students to integrate with the students at Little Rock Central High School. It bothers me that here were some kids who were so determined to get an education, to try to be all that God has called us to be. They went through the hurdles, they went through police barricades, and they realized that they had an issue in front of them. They had police barricades, they had people trying to kill them and destroy them, but all of a sudden you had them, they're being committed, and it shocks me that we have a lot of kids today who don't want to go to school, don't realize the free education that they have, that we had the Little Rock Nine, and the Little Rock Nine decided that they were going to be educated, but yet we've got too many kids sitting, in their, sitting on their laurels taking things for granted. I know I'm talking to some people in here today that we got too many people not willing to stand up and speak out, but the Little Rock Nine, can you imagine that? They probably went to Sunday school, understood that they created in God's image, that they have power on the inside, but there's something on the outside trying to destroy them, trying to destroy their equality, trying to destroy their willingness and ability to get an education. I don't know who I'm talking to because we all got somebody like that in our life. As soon as you want to do good. You got somebody telling you what you can and you can't do. As soon as you make up your mind, for God I'll live and for God I'll die, you're having someone to remind you of your past, remind you of your education and your finances. When God has anointed you with power, we allow somebody close to us to mess us up and mess us over and it bothers me because we've given people too much power for the anointing that God has given to us. We've allowed somebody to steal that anointing but I came here to tell somebody this morning that you are anointed with power that it's time for you to take your joy back you missed that it. time for you to take your happiness back whatever God has told you to do don't let anybody stop you don't worry about how big your dream is because as long as you got big dreams you serve a big God and because you serve a big God you can accomplish anything it's only those people who don't dream, who can't accomplish anything, but the good news is, is that you are anointed with power. Yes, you're going to have people hate on you. You're going to come and try to do the right thing, Maya, but you're going to have people from your left and from your right try to mess you up and mess you over. Well, as we look at our scripture, we find on this Resurrection Sunday, we find our Savior, our, our great Redeemer and Liberator, Jesus the Christ. He's being risen from the dead, but you do realize that he came down for glory to save a wretch like you or not. You do realize that he took off glory to bring on flesh and blood so that he can walk this earth for 33 years to help lead us and guide us and reconcile us with the Father. But you do realize with all of the miracles, with all of the blessings that he poured into people's life, he still has some haters that tried to bring him down. 
haters such as Pharisees, haters such as Sadducees, and as we celebrate a holy week, we found out that Jesus had a hater within his inner circle by the name of Judas who tried to sell him out for some money. Isn't it amazing, my friends, that the people who try to hurt us and break us are the ones within our own circle. It's, it's one thing to have our enemy try to break us, but it's another thing to have somebody who's been hanging with us, who eats with us, who walks with us, who we talk to time and time again, that tries to break us and destroy us. And we find Jesus is too anointed with power that he's not going to allow Judas to mess him up and mess him over. But you do realize once he gets betrayed, he goes from court to court with an unfair trial and an unjust system. Sounds like what's happening today, isn't it? An unjust system that's trying to crucify and execute brothers for doing the right thing. An unjust and unfair criminal justice system that chooses not to empower, but chooses to lock up people like animals. All I'm simply saying that Jesus was treated like a criminal, going from prison to prison with no defense team, no defense attorney. He was simply there by himself saying not a word, realizing that God was his father, that God was his chief counsel, understanding that he was anointed with power. And then he comes up to punch his pilot and they said, do you want Jesus or do you want Barabbas? Barabbas was the criminal. Jesus was the prince of peace. But people did not want the prince of peace because he threatened their system. He threatened their livelihood. Why? Because he was anointed with power. That sounds like what's happening today. Anytime Christians stand up for godliness, anytime Christians take a stand for doing the right thing, everybody says, give us Barabbas. Give us the easy style. Give us that which is not of God. Well, I want to help somebody say, keep on taking a stand. Don't you ever give up. Why? Because you are anointed with power. And then we find Jesus is, is being led to the Golgotha to be crucified and on his way. He's carrying the cross. He's carrying the burdens of the world. Why? Because he's anointed with power. He's been beaten. He's been executed. And now he's being crucified and he's on a cross down right between two thieves, one on his left and one on his right. One thief says, tries to blaspheme Jesus, but another thief tries to stick up for Jesus. One thief tries to downplay Jesus. Another one tries to lift him up. But the good news is in between two criminals was a Savior who was dying for our sins. And I need to help somebody with that this morning to let you know no matter the situation that you're going through, you got a God that stands right in between your situation. There's a God that says, I'm between bad and good. All you got to do is follow me and I'll anoint you with power. And now he's dead now. Now he gets taken down from the cross on past preparing for Passover and now he's in the grave on Friday. Can you, can you imagine in your sanctified imagination that the enemy is bloating they're having a devil party going on. Why? Because the Savior has been killed. They thought they executed our Lord. They thought that they had already completed the task and I need to help somebody. That's what somebody is doing to you and your family right now. They see that you're dead but but guess what? The best is yet to come. They think that you're down. They think that you've lost everything. But the good news is that God woke you up on this day for a brand new song. You missed your shot right there. Can you just think back over your life for all the people that tried to put a period at the end of your name but God erased the period and added a comma and said that there's a continuation and we find the continuation that the text lets us know that on the first day, on the Sabbath day, the first day after Sabbath, here come some women there. They're coming to the tomb of Lama. They're coming to anoint Jesus' body. They're getting there early in the morning. And in my imagination, I can hear these women saying, who's going to roll back the stone for us? We're coming to anoint the body of our Savior. We saw him taken down and we're coming to anoint his body. We're, we're coming
coming to do according to custom and ritual, but they forgot that Jesus said prior, prior chapters earlier that he was going to rise from the dead on the third day. So really, it was no need for them to come to the tomb, but ritual and tradition made them go to the tomb to see what was going to happen. But the Bible says when they got to the tomb, they said, who is going to roll this stone away? But a great earthquake came and an angel descended down from heaven and rolled the stone back away. And next thing you know, the angel is sitting on the stone, which, which blows my mind because we have a celestial, a celestial being coming down from glory, removing an obstacle, and they're sitting on top of the obstacle. You missed your shout. We have God causing a supernatural earthquake, and all of a sudden, the angel comes down and removes the obstacle and sits on top of the the obstacle. Don't miss your shout. God has a way of causing a supernatural earthquake over your life and having an angel come down and sit on top of your problem. You missed that. Whatever you're going through, always remember that God has a way of sitting on top of your problem and having you walk out. But the Bible lets us know that these women are coming and they seen, they saw this angel, an angel that's bright, that has bright Bright eyes that, that's what for continents that's lightning and, and the Bible also says that the guards when they saw this angel they all of a sudden came like dead men but the women also feared well I'm happy you probably said well what's the difference because they both feared one was becoming like a dead man the other one rejoiced well that lets me know one thing whenever you serving God God says don't fear whenever you serving God God doesn't come to trouble you but rather he comes to comfort you. You missed your shout on that. See, the gods were trying to do man's job and anytime you do what man tells you to do, rather than what God tells you to do, you will always freak out and pass out. But these women, they were fearful. But the angel said, man, don't be scared now because Jesus, who you came to see, he's already risen. He's not here. Can I give you the Sinclair translation? Why are you coming to the grave site looking for a live body? Living people don't hang in the grave. Only dead people are in the grave. Living people are up out of the grave. You missed that. Can I back up and say that again? Live people don't hang in the grave site. The grave site is only for dead people. He said, why are you here, Mary? Because Jesus is not here. He's already risen like he said he was going to do. But then he shouts me right now. He said, now this is what I want you to do. You've already heard the good news. I know you're probably singing and shouting. You may not fully understand it, but I want you to go ahead and tell somebody. In other words, the angel commissions them to run, run ahead and tell the good news. It helps me. Y'all miss that. He said, just don't keep it to yourself, but I want you to tell somebody about the power that woke Jesus up. I'm here to tell somebody right now. If God has ever done anything for you, don't keep it to yourself, but you got to run and tell somebody about the power that woke you up. You got to tell somebody about the power that makes a way where there is no way. You got to tell somebody about the power that can help put food on your table, clothes on your back, a roof over your head, power that can heal your body, a power that when people say no, God says yes, you got to run and tell somebody about but the Bible says they ran, they ran quickly. They, they didn't think about it, how they called it. They didn't say, let's pray about it. They, they went ahead and did it. They went ahead and got busy with it. They didn't say, let me go ahead and have a praise party. Let, let me go ahead and email everybody. Let me text everybody. Let me set up a conference call. But rather, let me call, let me tell everybody that the angel, what the angel said, because now, I'm anointed with power. That's my shout for somebody right there. That whenever you do what God has called you to do, God will anoint you with power to go places, say things, and do things that you would never think possible. Just think back over your life for a second to where you are right now and how you didn't think you was going to be here today. But somehow, somewhere, it was God's power that touched you. It was God's power that woke you up. It was God's power that made a way out of nowhere way for you. And you're here today anointed with power. Well, well you know what, since you're not feeling me like I need you to, I'm going to give you three and we out of here. The first thing that you need
need to, that you need to let that you need to understand on why you're anointed with power. How is that God sets you free when other people have left you or forgotten about you? See, Jesus was in the tomb. You do realize he had 12 disciples. One committed suicide. The other 11, we don't know where they were. You do realize that when he was going to Golgotha upon the cross, when he was hanging on the cross, he uttered some mighty words that nobody really understood. He uttered words like, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. See, Jesus had an understanding about forgiveness. He also said to the thief, today you're going to be with me in paradise. But then he looked down at another disciple, Dr. Don, and said, and woman, behold your son, and son, behold your woman. And then Jesus cried out, saying, Father, my father, why have thou forsaken me? He's on the cross, Kelly. He feels all alone. Nobody is there with him. He's gone through this pain by himself. Everybody has left him. People are looking far off, and people are telling him to come down. They're mimicking him and mocking him. He's by himself. But God's power is setting him free because he comes up and says, it is finished. And then I like it when he says, Macau, he says, Father, I commit my spirit into thy hands. He says, in other words, when everybody has left me, when people have forsaken me, I'm putting my my hands in the hands of Almighty God. Can I help somebody today? When people treat you bad, when people forget all about you, put your hands in God's hands. And when you put your hand in God's hands, God's going to do for you what he did for Jesus. He's going to wake you up. In case you don't remember, go back to Lazarus. You do know Lazarus who, who was in the grave for four days, Nicole. His sister sent word for Jesus saying, Jesus, you're the one that you love and sick. And Jesus took his sweet time to get there, which helps me understand he may not come when you want him. But he's always right on time. And, and when he got there, he all of a sudden found out that Lazarus was dead. And he talks to the two sisters and said, take me to where Lazarus was. And they said, Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Can you imagine them? They're feeling left out. They're feeling forgotten by Jesus. But Jesus said, wait a minute. I am the resurrection. And what shouts me that Lazarus is in the tomb. He's dead for four days. But Jesus is simply saying, He's really sleeping. He's forgotten. He, he's left in the tomb. He's forgotten by many. The morning time is already passing. And then when Jesus says, remove the stone, the sister said, wait a minute. There's going to be a foul odor coming from the grave. Isn't that something? They asked Jesus for a healing. They asked Jesus for deliverance. But when Jesus shows up on the scene, they're more concerned about the odor than they are about the resurrection. That's I need to help somebody right now. There's more people concerned about your filth and your dirt. But Jesus said, I see past filth and I see past the dirt. I'm coming to anoint you with power. And that's why he calls you by your name. And when he calls you by your name, you can come on out. That's why when God sets you free, he'll set you free when everybody else has forgotten about you. When everybody else has left you. The Bible tells us that no disciple came to the tomb. It was only women that came to the tomb. His homeboys did not show up. His homeboys were scattered. His homeboys left them up. But thank God that God did not leave him. I'm trying to help somebody today to let you know when everybody else leaves you, God will never leave you, nor will he ever forsake you. And the same power that woke Jesus up is the same power. That will wake you up. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, you, you, you missed that shout. Let me help you. The second thing that the text lets us know and why you're anointed with power is that God will give you the courage to believe when fear is all around you. Uh, well, these sisters, these sisters have fear because fear, one, who's going to remove the stone, Jason? Fear, two, they hear, they, they built the earthquake, they see an angel, and now they get afraid. 
But God said, look, don't be afraid. I I'm right there with you. See, the angel is here to help you, not to hinder you. I wish somebody could get that right now. God sends angels to help you and not to hinder you. God said, just because you show up, I'm going to show out. You missed your shadow. Let me say that again. Because you showed up this morning, God's going to show out in your life. All you got to do is just show up. Don't worry about this or that. All you got to do is show up. And when you show up, God will then show out. Bring all your cares to the altar. Bring all your worries to the altar. And God will show up in your life. Don't worry how he's going to do it. Just say, here I am, God. I'm trusting and believing in your word. I don't know how you're going to do it, but all I got to do is just simply show up. And you're not feeling that. See, see we just celebrated this past week, Father, the, uh, the assassination of, of one of the great prophets of our world, Reverend Dr. King, and, and how his life was snuffed out. A man of peace was gunned down because he was a man who had the courage enough to believe in God when his own homeboys, when his own people who tried to diss and dismiss him. Please understand that whenever you have a plan, whenever you hear from God, it doesn't mean that everybody's going to be on the same page. I wish somebody could say amen to that. When you tell people what God has told you to do, not everybody's going to be on the same page because everybody has their own hidden agenda. But, but thank God we had a Reverend Dr. King who saw past that hatred and saw the goodness of the Lord. And we do come to realize in that great speech, he said, my eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. In other words, God gave him courage to keep on speaking when he was fearful. And that's what I'm trying to help somebody. When somebody gets on your last nerves and you don't understand it, I double dare you to keep on speaking. Don't worry. All you got to do is say, I'm anointed with power. Why? Because my redeemer lives. But I'm going to give you the last point and then we're out of here. The last thing, what happens when you're anointed with power that God sets you on a mission? Okay, okay, got kind of quiet now. God puts you on a mission. He told the women to go. That, that, that we call that a seminary evangelism one-on-one. -on -one. Just, just, just go. Don't, don't, don't worry about what to say. Just simply go. Can you imagine when you're having an encounter with the Lord that you're anointed with power and he simply tells you to just go ahead and run your mouth. I wish I had somebody here that could say, you know what, Rev? I know how to run my mouth real good because when I think about the goodness of the Lord and all that he's done for me, I can't help but tell somebody about his goodness. I, I can't help but tell somebody about the marvelous works he's done in my life. So he simply said, go ahead and tell your story. Tell God, tell God, I'm telling people about how God delivered you. Tell people how he brought you from relationship to relationship. Tell God how he brought you from a mighty long way when you were in the hospital and sick, didn't know what to do, but it was God that stepped in. I wish I had somebody that could say, you know what? I was in an abusive relationship when somebody tried to break me, but God stepped in. When I was strung out on drugs and alcohol, God stepped in. When I didn't love myself, God stepped in. See, when God has you on a mission, you are to tell somebody about his goodness. Why? Because you are anointed with power. And when you're anointed with power, you can do all things but fail. Why? Because you got the spirit of the risen Christ living inside of you, wanting to work through you. All you have to do is be like the women and simply go. Because when you go, God will handle the rest. Can we look to the Lord in prayer?